Welcome to the Minolta Man channel. This is the first in a series of videos on upgrading my mid-2000s Cooler Master Stacker Evo series case, but the principles covered here in this video will work on any PC case that has available space for cable management behind the motherboard mounting surface. So your initial step is going to be trying to assess where you want to place the grommets. Here I've overlaid my motherboard onto six grommets and have roughly placed them where I want them to line up, uh, to line up with the connectors. So take off the motherboard. Next strip. step is uh, to trace the grommets and outline the grommets. Uh, here I've taped them down just to hold them securely so they don't slip, slip around while I trace them. Here I'm also using a, a thin felt tip marker, but later on I found that pencil actually works a lot better on metal. So if you have a thin mechanical pencil or something, that would suffice pretty well. Just trace the outline as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. After you're done tracing all six outlines, remove those grommets and you'll want to trace an inner line now. This is to give it a border so that the slot in the grommet will fit onto the metal. With these particular grommets, I'll link to them in the description below off of Amazon, I've measured the channel depth around 3.5 to 3.7 millimeters and so I've backed that down to about 3.3 millimeters here and I'll set my compass width to this. You can use whatever method you prefer to do tracing, but um, just make sure it doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere in the realm of the depth you want to trace. The reason I went with about about a quarter millimeter shorter is to give it about you know, half a millimeter worth of play around the metal so it's not tight and the grommets don't much up. So here I'll kind of just roughly trace around these guidelines I drew earlier of the outside to give us a good inner cut line. I found the pencil actually tends to rub off not as easily as the pen does. If you use pencil, it'll help you out quite a bit. Okay, so go back over your guidelines, the inner guidelines, and uh, darken them up if you see fit so you have a good guideline that will last through the cutting process without smudging. Here I just grab the largest drill bit that would fit into my handheld drill and you're going to cut one hole wherever you're most comfortable with starting these holes at. Give yourself a bit of a gap though to work with so you don't drill into the border. Wasn't particular concern with the finish of the cut so I didn't use any cutting oil. These are just cheap Harbor Freight bits but um, if you have a preferable method of using oil or want to save your nice cobalt bits or whatever you know go ahead and use cutting oil. Let's go ahead and do that for all six holes and then we can move on to cutting. Okay so I did some trial runs and uh, got the grommets installed pretty well as you can see in the to the left hand side there. Um, I did find after the first two I installed that not using the guide plate was a smarter way to go to freehand it as I'm about to show you here. Uh, as you can see those circular marks on the metal there used from the, the guide piece on the, the Dremel tool I'll put a link to that you can purchase at your Home Depot or online. Because of the high speed of the rotary tool, it's basically cranked all the way up. The vibrations put those marks in the metal so it ends up cleaner if you not use that and just handheld it, as you'll see coming up here. So these Dremel bits are mainly meant for aluminum siding. This piece of aluminum is actually quite thicker than I thought it was, and it's a bit over the thickest side they, they rated for, but it actually worked okay. Uh, the same bit cut just fine through all six holes, never dulled or anything, so it should be fine. Uh, Handholding you do to quite a bit of vibration here, as you can see. And the tool will just kind of ease up, and uh, you can always come back to the cut if need to. No need to let the tool get out of control. Just guide it nice and easy. So leave a, a bit of a gap between the guideline you cut and the actual 
path they're cutting because the tool is a bit can be a tiny bit hard to control and does tend to bite and, and shift a little bit and then we'll clean it up further as after we get this main hole cut up the goal here is just to get the, the large chunk cut out if you have a respirator for all this I also found that helpful both the filing and the Dremel work kicks up quite a bit of metal dust save you some pain on your lungs so here I'm going back over and cleaning out the the parts where we have a, a large gap between the cut line and the actual guideline that you drew. So I'm just kind of getting a little bit closer, not quite exactly the line because we're going to follow up with the file after this. You don't want to take too much material out, but just getting rid of the large chunks to save us some handwork with grinding down with the file. It's okay if you go over a line, the line a little bit, you do have a, you know, some play between where you want that edge to be and where the outer edge of the grommet is. But uh, if, you, if you can help it, try not to go too far over. Try and stay in the lines, as I managed not to do completely here. So I found if you work in a, in a clockwise direction, the tool tends to vibrate a little bit less. It still does a little bit, but it, as you can tell, this cut went a lot cleaner and quicker. Take breaks if you need them. A little bit more rough clean up here with the rotary tool before we follow up with the file. So I'm not quite a metal worker, so if you have a better file technique than I do, feel free to use it. Uh, if you can, use longer strokes. It helps with uh, making cleaner cuts, but sometimes shorter strokes have to do. So with, this, with the long flats on the oval, it was a lot easier just to use the flat file, make everything nice, and clean it up to the line. I fill up here with a round file for the turns of the oval, clean it up to the line as best you can. Here it's cleanup, you know, good enough. It's not perfect. Uh, the important is just to have something for the grommets to sit over. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. So again, I'm no metal worker, just hobbyist level. Clean everything up. We have a lot of opportunities for metal splinters, I'm sure, walking around. We'll get ready to actually install the grommets next. So it's pretty straightforward. Just going to get the, the slots on over the metal. It's not too hard. You'll want to start with the, the curved ends first so you can get the whole grommet into the hole. Work on the other curved edge. You can work on the flat pieces. Just working it slowly, bit by bit, inching it over the uh, inching it over into the metal. Metal's slightly thicker than the slot width is, but uh, it still fits pretty well. Just work on it gently and it'll, it'll fit pretty well. Same with the other five grommets. Work on the, the turns first and the, the fit, and then you can fit the flats on the metal. the grommets installed. I said earlier that one that looks a mess with all the marring around it that's from that plastic shield piece the guide piece that comes with the rotary tool kit or bit kit. I'm sure that could probably be polished out but the motherboard is going to cover up most of that and it's not really that big a deal for me um, for you to avoid those marrings you just hand hold the tool like we showed in the videos and you won't get any of those marks. Okay now you're cutting it um, apologies for the camera angle in a lot of this video. Space in my workspace is pretty tight for a tripod, but it is what it is. So when you cut, 
cut from the outside to the center of the piece. It'll make things a lot easier. Basically here I'm just cutting the cross along the cross and then two star patterns uh, on either right and left side of, of that cross there. Cuts pretty easily with a knife, soft rubber. Just go from outside to center. And there it is. Finished installed cut grommet. And there's the finished work. Ready for a motherboard install that will take you from this to this. Nice and clean. Stay tuned to this channel for more videos on upgrades to this Stecker Evo case. I'll be publishing videos soon on upgrades I did converting the USB 2.0 ports to USB 3.0. I'll also be doing a video on nylon looming and further organization of the cables you see here to make it look even cleaner. I'll also be covering and reviewing Minolta SLRs soon as well. Lots of videos coming up for the channel. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.